In this video, we'll learn to write Lewis structures for covalent compounds. These are compounds where we have two or more nonmetals bonded together to make a molecule. So to do that, the first step when we write Lewis structures is to count the valence electrons. So here we have the periodic table organized by number of valence electrons. Group 1, they all have one valence electron. Group 2 has two valence electrons. We skip the transition metals, but then group 13, through 18 has 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 valence electrons. So this is something you really should commit to memory. It'll make Lewis structures a lot easier. Let's try this for carbon dioxide. So here's CO2, and we want to know how many valence electrons we have. So we find carbon, that's right here, group 14, sometimes called 4A, that has four valence electrons. So we have four plus Oxygen over here, group 16, sometimes called 6A, has six valence electrons. We do have two oxygens, though, so we multiply by two. When we do that, we get 4 plus 12. We get 16 total valence electrons for CO2, carbon dioxide. Now you try it. Pause and find the number of valence electrons for N2O, dinitrogen monoxide. So we find nitrogen, which is in group 15, sometimes called 5A. That has five valence electrons, but we have two of them. We're going to multiply that by two. Plus, we find oxygen that has six valence electrons. Add it all up. 10 plus 6, 16 valence electrons for N2O. So this first step is crucial. If we don't get the right number of valence electrons, we won't get the right Lewis structure. Let's try one more. Pause and find the number of valence electrons for CH4, methane. So for methane, we find carbon, that has four valence electrons, plus hydrogen over here. Group one has one valence electron, multiplied by four, total of eight valence electrons for CH4. In step two, we put the least electronegative element in the center of the Lewis structure. There is an exception though, hydrogen that always goes on the outside. So let's look at carbon tetrachloride here. We find carbon, which is 2.5, and then chlorine, 3.0. So since carbon is less electronegative, the carbon would go in the center. For CH4, carbon's 2.5, hydrogen's 2.1. But remember, hydrogen is an exception. Hydrogen always goes on the outside. So we're going to put carbon in the center with the hydrogens on the outside when we draw these Lewis structures. An easy way to remember the pattern for electronegativity is as we go towards fluorine, we become more electronegative, either from this way or this way. So anything closer to fluorine is more electronegative. So pause and give it a try. Which element in SF2 and in H2O will go in the center of the Lewis structure? So we find sulfur, that's right here, and fluorine. So we know fluorine, that's the most electronegative, so the sulfur, that's going to be less, so we'll put the sulfur in the middle of this Lewis structure. Here, with water, we know that oxygen right next to fluorine is going to be very electronegative, but we have this exception that hydrogens, they always go on the outside. So with H2O, the oxygen will go in the center of our Lewis structure. So for the next few steps, I'll draw the Lewis structure for CH3Cl. So I need to count the valence electrons, And I know carbon is less electronegative than chlorine, and hydrogen always goes on the outside. So I'll put the carbon on the inside, the H is around it. And let's just put the chlorine down here. So we have 14 total valence electrons. We're going to spread them out around the CH3Cl. So I'll put pairs of electrons between the atoms. This will form the chemical bonds. So we're drawing Lewis structures for covalent compounds. That means these electrons between the atoms, they're shared. They're covalent compounds. So we've used two, four, six, eight valence electrons. So we have the electrons. We've formed our chemical bonds. In step four, we're going to complete the octets on the outside atoms. An important exception, again, is hydrogen. Hydrogen only needs two valence electrons to be full, to have a full outer shell. So the hydrogens, they all have two valence electrons. So we're done with the hydrogens. 
So let's put valence electrons around the chlorine. Since we've used eight and we have a total of 14, we have six more valence electrons. So we'll put those six around the chlorine. And we've used all of our valence electrons. Each hydrogen has two, so that's good. It's sharing with the carbon. The chlorine has eight and the carbon has an octet. So this is the Lewis structure for CH3Cl. So using what you've learned so far, pause and write the Lewis structure for this compound. So for water here, H2O, we find hydrogen that has one valence electron. It's in group one. We have two hydrogen atoms plus oxygen right here in group 16, sometimes called 6A, that has six valence electrons. So we have a total of eight valence electrons for H2O. We'll put the least electronegative element in the center, but remember hydrogen always goes on the outside, so we have to put oxygen in the center. We'll put the hydrogens on the outside, then we'll put a pair of electrons between the hydrogen and the oxygen to form our covalent bond where they're sharing electrons. We've used four, we have two more, so we're gonna put the two on the oxygen, and now we're done. We've used all eight valence electrons. Each hydrogen has two, like it's supposed to. The oxygen in the center, that has an octet, it has eight. We're done. This is the Lewis structure for H2O. But what happens if you use up all the valence electrons and you don't have an octet? Let's talk about that for a moment. So for C2H2, I know the hydrogens go on the outside, so I'll put my two carbons here and my hydrogens. If I count my valence electrons, I have four times two plus one times two. I have a total of 10 valence electrons here for C2H2. So I put a pair of electrons between each element to form the chemical bonds. And at this point, I've used six, I have four more. So I'll go and complete the octets on the carbons. And I've used all my valence electrons. The problem is the carbon has eight and each hydrogen has two but this carbon right here only has four. What I can do is I can move valence electrons between the carbons. So instead of sharing just one pair, now it's sharing two pairs. And that way, this carbon, it still has eight, but this carbon, it has six. So we're close, it almost has eight. If we move another pair in there between them, now we have a triple bond. This carbon here, it has eight, that's good. And now this carbon has eight as well. And if you count the valence electrons, two, four, six, eight, 10, we're still only using 10 valence electrons. So we can form double or triple bonds when we run out of valence electrons. Pause and give this one a try. Note that oxygen will have six valence electrons and we have two oxygen atoms. So we said oxygen, six valence electrons, we have two of them, so we have a total of 12 valence electrons. Here, these are the same atoms, so it doesn't matter what we put in the center. We'll form a chemical bond between the two oxygen atoms. We've used two valence electrons, and then we'll go around and complete the octets until we run out of valence electrons. We've used eight, 10, and 12. And you can see the problem already. We have an octet for this oxygen, this oxygen only has six. So let's do what we did last time. We'll just move a pair of electrons between the atoms and that'll form a double bond. If we count the valence electrons up, this oxygen has eight, this oxygen has eight, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 total. So this is the Lewis structure for O2. You could move this down here if you liked. At this point, you should try to get as much practice as you can. There's a link in the description for lots more practice. As you move on, you'll run into things like expanded octets, where something like BrCl5, this line here, this represents a single bond, a pair of electrons. And we have two, four, six, eight, ten. So we have more than eight. We have more than an octet. For elements in period three and below, we can run into these expanded octets occasionally. So the octet rule is fairly general. Another thing we can run into is this idea of resonance, that sometimes we can draw these Lewis structures different ways. For example, here we could have our double bond on the top, on the side, or on the other side. These different resonance structures, these are called equivalent resonance structures. 
they aren't really switching back and forth. In real life, it's an average of these three structures. You get something like this here. But as we draw Lewis structures when we have double bonds, sometimes triple bonds, we can run into this idea of resonance. When we have non-equivalent resonance structures, we can use a concept called formal charges to help figure out which one is more likely or favorable. This is Dr. B with How to Write Lewis Structures for Covalent Compounds. Thanks for watching.